Good afternoon, people. What is going on? Welcome back to the channel MUFC MPB. My name is Aaron Chikaya. I am your host for today. And make sure you do a couple of things for us before you carry on with this video. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, comment. You're helping the channel massively with the algorithms if you do these things. So please do that if you haven't done already. So let's dive straight into this, people. Paul Mitchell, man. Paul Mitchell, you guys have seen the title. You guys have seen the thumbnail. And, you know, it's heating up a little bit. It's heating up. It looks like Paul Mitchell is getting closer and closer to Manchester United. Uh, you guys have watched the video that we've done with Ben Jacobs. Um, shout out to everyone who has done so. And shout out to Ben J Jacobs as well for coming through and talking to us. And um, just to reiterate a little bit what he says about Paul Mitchell... Uh, he said that Paul Mitchell wants the Manchester United sporting director job. He's also just moved back to Manchester. He is a Manchester City fan. Those uh, He's a Manchester City fan, though those in recruitment feel it works better if you are a dispassionate, if you are dispassionate about the club you work for. And this is not the first time we're seeing this. You know, we've seen a lot of, you know, sporting directors being a, a fan of a certain club, but, you know, they go and work for the rivals and make the rivals strong. I'm not, I'm not always saying, I'm not saying that it always works out, but, you know, there might be a little unconscious love towards the club that you work for, even though you're a fan of the possible rival. But just some personal thoughts on Paul Mitchell. I've heard about him for a long time. Um, I remember the first time I heard about Paul Mitchell must have been around 2017, 2018, when he was working at Monaco. I believe that was the time that he used to work there. If I'm wrong, please correct me in the comments. It was around that time that I heard about him and um, I looked at this this huge team that he was building and I'm, we're going to get to you know the teams he used to work for in a minute and um, we're going to get into the nitty gritty and to the details of it. Um, but I heard of Paul Mitchell the first time there. Then his name kind of, I'm not going to say faded out, but it kind of went quiet a little bit. Then I heard his name pop up again when he worked for uh, RB Leipzig. And, you know, you guys know what a meteoric me what a meteoric rise they had. I don't even know if I said that correctly, but you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. They had a super rise from wherever they were from and RB just came in, uh, Red Bull, sorry, just came in, bought the club and, or bought shares in the club, I believe, and they put Leipzig where they are today. So um, that's the second time I heard about him. And then his name kept popping up a little bit. I remember when we were actively looking for someone to fill, fill in that role of a sporting director. Paul Mitchell wasn't mentioned. Do you know what I mean? He was mentioned, you know, he's a Manchester guy. And now apparently he's moved back to Manchester. So Man City already have their sporting director. They have their structure. So it, it can only be for Manchester United. So um, yeah, listen, I wouldn't be against... Paul Mitchell coming to the club, you know. Um, listen, let me um, let me look at some of the clubs that he used to work for. Um, obviously, he started at um, Milton Keynes, from what I can read here. Uh, in January 2012, Paul Mitchell joined Southampton as head of recruitment, and Southampton at the club were championship were in the championship, um, and obviously the club gained promotion to the Premier League. And he began to work with uh, Pochettino following his appointment in January 2013. And he oversaw, he oversaw the signings of the likes of Nathaniel Klein, Maya Yoshida, Paolo Gazaniga and Stephen Davis. Obviously not household names in the Premier League, but you can look at the works that have been done at Southampton when Paul Mitchell was there, when Marissa Pochettino was there. I believe they played Europa League football. Listen, and I think he oversaw... The likes of uh, Graziano Pelle as well, if I'm not wrong. Um, I think at one point there was even Gabbiadini who was there. Like the recruitment was quite decent for a club like Southampton. Like I said, they were in the Europa League. And at the time, I think they hadn't been in that competition like ever. So, and I think he also, he, um, also oversaw the likes of Sadio Mane. Um, please correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but... I'm sure the likes of Virgil van Dijk as well, that he scouted and all came to the club under his, um, when he was head of recruitment. Following Pochettino's move to the Premier League, uh, to Premier League rival Spurs, uh, Mitchell completed a switch and he helped the club sign players such as Deli Ali, Hyun Min Son, 
Kieran Trippier, uh, Dolby Alderweireld. Um, but obviously there was a feud with Daniel Levy and he left. Again, working with Maurizio Pochettino, which seems to be a manager he liked to work with. You know, the likes of Deli Ali, Hyun Min Son, Kieran Trippier, Alderweireld, who formed a fantastic partnership with um, with uh, Jan Vertonghen. And then, you know, you look at the likes of Deli Ali, hit the ground running, literally, when uh, when he moves from MK Dons. Hyun Min Son came from the Bundesliga, from Leverkusen at the time, hit the ground running, kind of, in the Premier League. Until this day, he's at Spurs. So... The people that are, the the players that we are naming right here are not just any type of players. Do you know what I mean? They're players that are household names in the Premier League. Hugh Minson, Alderweireld, Trippier. Do you know what I mean? So, following that, he um, was head of recruitment uh, and development by um, at RB Leipzig rather. And in his first transfer window with the club, Mitchell helped sign the likes of Mateusz Cunha, uh, Nordi, uh, Nordi Mukiele, who's at PSG now, I believe, as well as Arsenal youth prospect Emil Smith Rowe on loan. I remember that. Emil Smith Rowe went on loan to RB Leipzig, um, had a good six months, a good spell, and was immediately loaned back to, or immediately went back to Arsenal. So again, you know, he's not signing bad players. You know, he's signing some quality, quality players, you know. Um, and Mitchell attracted interest from Samuel, several Premier League clubs throughout 2019 and was heavily linked with a move to Manchester United. Like I told you, there was a time where we were heavily linked with Paul Mitchell. Um, around 2019, 2020, I would say. Um, and yeah, listen, I, I, like I said, I wouldn't be against it. I would not be against appointing someone like Paul Mitchell. Now... The question remains, though, he's scouted all these players, but never, or I believe none of the clubs he's been in recruitment for have won the league. But that wouldn't be true because if he works at Monaco, Monaco finished champions. But then I do think it must have been Luis Campos who was, it must have been Luis Campos. Yeah, I might be wrong. It must, it, it was between Luis Campos and Paul Mitchell who were both or either at Monaco at the time, but you know, the rumours are saying that none of the teams he recruited for finished champions. And my response to that is, at the moment, Manchester United are nowhere near winning a title, a league title. So right now, talking about titles would be the absolute wrong thing to do. I think right now what we have to focus on is recruit well again. That is the primary objective. Recruit well, and then from there, we'll see what happens. And then we can eventually start talking about progressing, competing and only then when you start competing only that's when you can start talking about you know challenging for the title anything before that we shouldn't even be thinking about winning a, a league title so right now what we need to focus on is recruit well I believe as much as I back Ten Hag as, and as much as I wanted to want him to succeed I look at the structure he had at Ajax and there were people there to help him Van der Sar over Mars there were people there to help him on the side, you had people like Louis van Gaal, who's kind of a counsellor to the club, you know, giving his, his ideas and giving his opinions on certain players and certain decisions made by the club because, you know, Louis van Gaal, been, that, been there, done that. He's been around the block. So if Paul Mitchell can come in and help Ten Hag identify some of the talents or some of the players that Ten Hag would like to come to come into the club, I believe that's the right decision because right now, I don't think Ten Hag's making the right choices. I still struggle to understand some of the signings that he made. Mason Mount. I was all for the signing of Anthony, but right now I'm sceptical. Right now I'm highly sceptical. Anthony has not scored a Premier League goal since October 2022. I could not believe it when I saw the stat. And that is just not good enough. Not good enough. And you can't just go off the basis of, I used to work with him at XYZ. Or I was coaching at XYZ, he played against us and I liked him. That can't be the only factor why you're bringing in a the player. There has to be a track record. You need to sit down with the sporting director. There has to be a, a, a track record. There have to be stats. There, have to be, there has to be a, a thorough background check on the behavior, the family, the surroundings, everything. Not trying to insinuate that anything is wrong with Mason Mount. But I'm just saying, Mason Mount hasn't worked out so far. And I don't think it will, if I'm quite honest, the way it's going right now. Anthony, he's on course to become one of the worst signings at Manchester United. 
the only signing that has been a success is Lissandro Martinez. Lissandro Martinez is the only signing that has been a success so far. And when I say success, I say it very lightly because the only thing we've won is a Carabao Cup. Anything beyond that we haven't achieved yet. Maybe. So that's the only signing you can look at and say, this has worked out, you know. I'm looking at all the other signings that he's made. Hoyland so far, you know, I'll let the kid off because he's, he's I'll let him off. He's 20 years of age. He's not necessarily getting the right um, service, I believe. I think he should get way better service than he is than he is getting now. Um, who else? Amrabat, you know, jury's still out on him. Um, he's only joined the club recently, so I'll give him the necessary time. But when I mention the likes of Mason Mount, it's because of the reputation he already has and the experience he already has of playing in the Premier League. And so far, it's just not been it. So you do have to question the recruitment. And furthermore, Paul Mitchell wouldn't be linked with us if everything was 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 going so well. You know, it clearly there's an indication that things are not going well, recruitment-wise. Clearly there's an indication that when it comes to bringing in players, when it comes to identifying profiles, Ten Hag is... is he's not cutting it. He's not cutting it. And he... Fergie was a different situation. So Alex Ferguson built the club from absolutely nothing to a, to a powerhouse in English football. We are nowhere near being a powerhouse in English football at the moment. When it comes to history, absolutely. But right now, in this present moment, no. So, yeah, we need to, um, we need to take a deep, deep look at ourselves when it comes to recruitment bring in the right people to help Ten Hag to try and bring in the right players because he can't do it all by himself. He can't go and scout players, look at footage online or whatever software he's using, uh, call the players, negotiate with the players, convince them to come to the club, uh, then coach, uh, think about the team's next lineup, think about, the, think about the injuries and change something that needs to be... He can't do everything by himself especially not in 2023. Back in the 90s and the noughties, it was possible for Fergie to do that. But right now in 2023, there are so many other things that a manager has to deal with that it's making it virtually impossible to deal with everything at, like by yourself. Ten Hag needs help. Desperately. Desperately. He needs help. He can't do everything by himself. And it's up to Ten Hag as well to recognise that because if he doesn't recognise it, then... <laughs> What's the point? Because we can sit here and, and talk and talk and talk and criticise and say this and say that, but if he doesn't realise it himself, there's a problem. Ten Hag needs help and I think Paul Mitchell can be the right choice to help him. I don't believe that there's any other sporting director who's very knowledgeable in his role and very prominent in the world at the moment. Sven Mislintat just got uh, sacked by Ajax due to you know the whole issue with his company. Um, all of the other sporting directors that are um, renowned in Europe are currently taken. I think Monchi is at Seville still. Uh, Luis Campos is at PSG. Um, you look at the, some of the German guys, Max Ebal, he's at Borussia Mönchengladbach at the moment, but he's kind of negotiating to go to Bayern Munich. Matthias Zammer, mm, I don't know. Zali Hamicic, he just got sacked from Bayern. Oliver Kahn, he just got sacked from Bayern. So... There's not much choice out there, so we can't <laughs> we can't be sitting here as fans and nitpick what type of sporting director we want. There's not many available out there, and there's not many that would agree to come to Man United. Van der Sar is still at Ajax, Overmars is at Antwerp, so you know all of the prominent ones I would say are taken. So we need to beggars can't be choosers. We need to take what is available, and what is available right now is Paul Mitchell, and he ain't he ain't the worst. Let's just say that. Whether he's one of the best, that's debatable. But he ain't one of the worst. And the track record shows. The track record doesn't lie. So if he can come in, identify the players with Ten Hag and tell him, listen, I know what type of football you want to play. So let me deal with the recruitment. You just take care of the coaching. If that can happen, that would be an amazing partnership. It's a shame that it didn't happen with Rangnick. Speaking of Rangnick, he's not available either because he's coaching uh, Austria qualified them for the Euros. Congratulations to, to Rangnick for that. But like I said, beggars can't be choosers. So yeah, listen, people, let me know what you think in the comments below. 
Is Paul Mitchell a great choice for Man United? Is he not? If he comes to the club, if he signs for us, do you think he could be part of a succeeding structure? Do you think he'll be part of a declining structure, a failing structure? Let us know in the comments. Until then, people, take care, have a great afternoon, and I'll see you next time. Peace.